Hey, how you doing? We're going to pick it up. Just read a few verses today. Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. Let's start in verse 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So let's kind of go through these verses and let's go through this story. Now Jesus, after he hears a, uh, heals a paralytic man in the story we talked about last time, he goes on from there and he sees a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. And he says, follow me. And amazingly enough, Matthew just kind of gets up and follows Jesus. Now, I would imagine Matthew has heard some about Jesus um, and all the miracles he's doing. Jesus is starting to gain some, some popularity, some fame. So Matthew probably knows a little bit about Jesus, or maybe it really indeed was like just one look. And then Matthew just gets up and follows him. Um, but I would imagine Matthew's probably heard a little bit about Jesus so far. And so when Jesus says, hey, follow me, this is really interesting because Matthew is a tax collector. And so these tax collectors were just, just hated in this time period because they're ripping people off. They're taking money for themselves that they shouldn't be doing. And so Matthew is one of these guys, one of these uh, just, just hated people. And so Jesus calls him, and he calls him not just to follow him, but to be one of the twelve, one of the twelve disciples. This is Matthew, one of the apostles. He's going to go do amazing things in the book of Acts. And so this is really, really interesting because Jesus takes somebody, a tax collector, not somebody you would think. You would think he's going and looking at the Pharisees, looking at teachers of the law, people that know the scriptures, and going and getting those people and calling them to be one of the twelve. But instead, he goes and he gets a tax collector and says, follow me, and Matthew gets up immediately and follows him. So then after that, Jesus is having dinner at Matthew's house, and he has many tax collectors, and my Bible says, quote-unquote, sinners, uh, came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus gives an interesting answer. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And so what is he quoting right now? He's quoting Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. So let's go back and read that. Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. So the whole verse, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice, an acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. And so Jesus in the Old Testament now, or God in the Old Testament now is, is saying, hey, like, if you're holding unforgiveness against somebody, like, Go forgive them. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. An acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. Like if you're going and doing these burnt offerings like they did and sacrificed, you know, animals, goats, birds, whatever, sheep, um, to God back as they did in this day, if you're doing that and you're doing it just as like this, uh, this, this ritual thing and you have no acknowledgement of God, like I acknowledgement of God rather than burnt sac uh, sacrifices, burnt offerings, and mercy, not sacrifice. Interesting, interesting to hear uh, these verses, and we kind of learn a little bit about the heart of God. Like Jesus wants to wants to go redeem people, and he's in the business of doing that. Like he calls many of the twelve from people like people like tax collectors, like Matthew. Like Jesus is the business in the business of redeeming people. And if you're somebody that feels like you're too far gone, the reality is is that you're not. Jesus is very capable of of redeeming anything. Jesus is really really amazing. We also see a similar kind of uh, verse in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Now, this is also when Jesus is meeting with the tax collector, and at the end of it, it says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Very icon uh, iconic verse. It goes very much along with these verses here, and it's just so neat to see the heart of God. We also see the heart of God in stories like um, Jesus going out and, and getting the one sheep that was lost out of a hundred sheep. He has 99 sheep. He goes out and get the one lost sheep. Like Jesus cares about the lost. And how is this applicable to us? We need to also be people that want to go out and seek and save 
the lost, when we know the reality uh, that there is a, a heaven and hell and that there's people that, that could live a life with Jesus and experience crazy miracles and live, live an amazing life with God, it's like we got we to gotta go out and see if we can do something about that. And that, that doesn't mean that you need to be pushy and um, weird about it. You don't need to do that sort of thing. But, you know, very simply, if you don't know exactly where to start with that, one of the amazing things we can do is to lead by example, to live with an example so that our testimony is good. Because if we go out and we try to be pushy and try to save people in that way, and then our lives are just absolute disasters where we're just wild hypocrites, like that's going to hurt our testimony significantly. So let's make sure that we get that inner transformation. And as that's happening, let's also go out and remember the heart of God to go out and seek and save the lost. So let's pray. Let's pray for God to, uh, maybe if we need redemption in that transformation, for God to work with us in that. And also at the same time, let's pray for God to give us a heart for the lost and to be able to give us the courage and the wisdom to know how we can go about doing that. So let's pray. Lord God, I just thank you. Thank you that you're just in the, in the business of redeeming and transforming people. And I just pray, Lord, that you would transform each and every one of us. I thank you for your redeeming power, and I also pray, Lord, that you would give us wisdom, how we can go out and seek and save the lost, not in a, not in a way that's weird, but a way that's actually effective and a way that isn't hypocritical or judgmental and that sort of thing, Lord God. So just give us good hearts. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.